Hi, good evening, everyone. Hope you all are doing well and are as excited as I am and we are for this panel discussion on smart labs using AI in the diagnostic services industry. Um, I'm Nisha Bhatia. I'm your moderator for this panel today. I am um, working as a director in PwC's health industries practice. PwC is one of the leading health industries consulting services today. And we have a wide range of consulting services across the healthcare value chain. Artificial intelligence is one of the personal favorite area where I'm personally working with a lot of healthcare companies in helping them strategizing um, AI solutions and also helping them implement the same in their uh, delivery areas. So let's begin our discussion by introducing our eminent panel member to talk about how AI is transforming our diagnostic services industry. So with me today, I have my panelist members, um, Dr. Ravi Gupta, sorry, Dr. Ravi Gore, he's a director and chair medical advisory committee on Chris Lab. Then I have um, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Anuj. Um, Anuj Parkash, he's a senior consultant and head uh, in the field of biochemistry department, pathology. Then I have uh, Dr. Gaurav Kapoor, he's the AD and HOD in radiology division of Max Hospital. I have Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Sanjay Dhavan, um, he's with the Clear Medi Healthcare uh, Private Limited Company. Dr. Nitin Tharve, he's the chairman of Nidan Group of Companies and Jatin Mahajan, who's the MD of Mitra, uh, JP, J. Mitra Companies Private Limited. Um, so we have a very eminent panelist over here uh, with a very rich perspective and a diverse knowledge to add to this session on artificial intelligence. So it's one of the very interesting subject today, artificial intelligence. It's actually, uh, artificial intelligence is now a part of our day-to-day -day life and more so in the health care industry today. Uh, artificial intelligence today has the potential to transform the way diagnostic industry is operating today. It is uh, making, by use of uh, making efficient tools, it is making diagnostic services more efficient, accurate, and also accessible to a wide range of uh, disease conditions today. Um, so uh, let's understand, uh, you know, uh, with um, our panel members, how is the AI today disrupting this industry and understand what are the changes or what are the, some of the areas that they're seeing in their field today? So let us start with Dr. Ravi as to what are some of the areas where you are seeing the intervention of artificial intelligence and how do you think it is improving the uh, end objective of bringing in more standardization and bringing in more efficiency? Well, good evening and thank you, Nisha. I think it's uh, my pleasure to be here at the ELIT uh, event. And I think uh, probably a very relevant topic, which is a uh, couple of years back, we were thinking that it is just somewhere in the air and it's going to take some time to come back. But I think today we are, it's right in with us. And I think everybody is trying to look into it, what is AI, what is AI. So I think artificial intelligence, when we talk about it's, uh, I think, basic, I think I was talking before the session, it's something, what we call it, the hype or a hope. You know, like, there's a lot of hype about it, there's a lot of hope about it, but is it been able to serve something what we're looking for? And especially the Indian healthcare industry. And uh, I come from diagnostics, I'm an oncopathologist, so I think uh, oncopathology was the first to get AI uh, when it started cancer therapies, cancer diagnostics, uh, genomics and everything started, so personalized treatment started, precision medicine, target-based therapies. I think AI was definitely been very, very helpful and still is very, very being helpful to come out with actual personalized therapy. No, but I think two important things I'd like to just mention here. You know, uh, you know, like it's something which is like uh, we are talking today, the future which is still to unfold. I think we are going to know about that one. And second thing, you know, like there's always a war, you always talk about human intelligence 
versus uh, or high versus AI. You know, human, and that's but this is, I think, uh, that's not a war. I think it's basically it's impossible war. It's not going to happen. Both have to work together. And uh, the more important is like I'm very sure the uh, sometime maybe you probably you know human and human kind kind of a people you probably both of them will be working together in hands in hand. But there are his own challenges. I think I remember there's a quote note. I think I read it somewhere. You know, the, the lady was standing to a grave with her husband. And if the husband has died and she was standing and people said, oh, this is something in the AI era, tele area kind of a thing. How suddenly he died, he was perfectly fine. So what happened early morning, he had, so I had an AI doctor. We tried to open the login. He said, no, your password expired. Oh, I get my password. Then he said, oh, the version has changed. Then he said, okay. And by the time I reached, the, you know, take about 15 minutes, by the time my husband collapsed and he died. So I think these are the challenges. Otherwise, probably it was, you were saying, my neighbor was a doctor. I could have rushed and got the treatment done. So I think multiple infrastructure challenges today, the data validation challenges today, these are all various parts of the AI. But today, I think more important is like two important things. First, we need to have the right data into place. Molecular, genomics, I think this is a trans era of genomic diagnosis. Everything is based sure. on genomics, number one. And number two is, I think, developing a trust. Because unless, it, because healthcare is nothing but a trust. Any data which goes in, a doctor cannot trust AI straight away. Patient cannot trust AI straight away. It has to be validated for a long time. Because the data, the kind of data is going inside it, the kind of validation is going to happen out there. And then you have the algorithms coming out of it, and then probably it's a digital pathology or Anything for that matter, everywhere it has found its own. Any specific use case that you would like to highlight, especially from the field of oncology, you know, where it has kind of uh, proved to be beneficial? Yeah. yeah, I think cancer, cardiology and neurology, three things have come up very well. In cancer, what happens is the diagnosis today is okay, it's like histopathology based. But every cancer patient is now getting a tumor profiling done based on genomics. Moment you get Sorry that genomic we have then uh, Mr. You have Rastogi, who so much of us, senior mutation. consultant and head imaging and interventional radiology, Narayana Health. Thank you so much for making it here, sir. Sorry, you know, the, when any cancer, there's nothing but mutation. When you do a, a sequencing methodology today, we get n number of mutations, thousands of mutations probably happening in a cancer, maybe one cancer patient. Every cancer we're finding a different. Now, how do you treat that? This is where we have bioinformatics data and AI coming out with the entire details with all studies put together in this individual with this diagnosis, with this mutation, this is a drug is going to act. So it's very personalized target based therapy. That is the reason today the chemotherapy has become absolutely more or less pain free. We hardly so, get any side effect. Treat therapy is right on that mutated gene is not killing the organ, it's killing that particular gene. And that's why the success rate in fit has become almost like breast cancer. You find like almost no difference. So then we are trying to say that, you know, it is helping us in uh, moving towards personalized medication Absolutely. and early detection of Absolutely. diseases. Uh, I move on to um, Dr. Anuj, you know, uh, you know, in your experience, if you would like to highlight, you know, how it is going to, how it is making an impact in your inventory decision making, you know, in your radiology div uh, division. Uh, okay, uh, thanks, Nisha. Uh, so, before coming to the inventory, I think you know first thing I would like to say that that uh, being in Medanta, how it is helping our patients. So far, we actually are using the AI in our practice. So, I would like to highlight few aspects of it yeah. before coming to the inventory part. Uh, so, uh, I take care of my biochemistry lab uh, in Medanta, and uh, uh, just to tell you the numbers, we are dealing with close to four thousand samples. Uh, with close to 20,000 tests on, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And these samples, when I'm saying, these samples are coming from coming from ICUs, all sick patients, emergencies, and they are not well patient, well well samples. They are all ill samples, I would say. So, I mean, the, imagine, and it's 24 by 7 operations. So, to manage these huge, humongous tasks, and we have around uh, six instruments on the, on the track system, then we have... Uh, uh, several other instruments which work and ch keeps churning out the results and data 24 by 7. So by utilizing, uh, so obviously it's humanly not possible for us to manage this data. So we are taking care or taking use of our uh, automation or the AI in our practice. 
Uh, for example, just to tell you that we have our uh, instrument manager software which guides our instruments for, for load balancing. Uh, so by, with, with the help of load balancing, we are able to reduce our turnaround time. Our uh, turnaround time is, uh, and every and our first pass yield is around, around 95%. By means that every time we put a sample into our machine, we get a result in almost 95% of, of the times. Sure. Uh, and because, you know, as I told you, we get requests from ICUs, emergencies, cardiologies, OTs. So we have under this pressure to reduce, uh, to release the results as early as possible. And because of the same technology, it guides us, uh, it flags us, any, any discrepancy or delta checks. So software guides us to doctors and it also helps our technologists to release the results. Uh, so all of these factor in, uh, currently we are using in sure. our system. Uh, so, which is helping us uh, in our in our practice. Yeah. Now, coming to uh, your question of uh, inventory management. So, as I told you, uh, I, I think in previous panel, they had a lot of discussion on inventory management, which they said that, especially in the hospital setup, the inventory plays a key role. So, so for us in the same same setup, we also have inventory management is important in our setup as well. So, uh, the technology uh, plays very important role in this aspect because uh, any critical reagent getting short or any test not being available, it, it would be disaster. Sure. So to manage that, and at the same time, you can't overstock the reagents as well. So it's, so it's a very, very fine balance you have to maintain between the availability of our reagents, how much to order, when to order. So if you have something like software or AI, which actually knows your trend, right. it knows your it knows that this is your mapping or this is your, the way you keep ordering your uh, in, in reagents. So it guides, so obviously for a human being, so, so for example, my uh, lab uh, person is here, she, she, is the manage, she manages our inventory. So if she gets this tool, which guides us, which tells us that this region is getting, going to be expired soon, manage this inventory first, this region is going to, you have to order it right now because the buffer stock is getting, getting depleted. Sure. So all of these uh, things can be done if you have, so for example, in our hospital, we are already using a SAP software which is actually guiding us uh, with our inventory, but definitely uh, having AI system based inventory management would be a great boon for healthcare industry. Absolutely, great. Imagine the kind of impact it would have if the, this one hospital, integrated hospital, when you know in that area some epidemic is going to happen, yeah. probably the inventory management can be coordinated so well. That's a no, no, absolutely. Of no, it's post pandemic, uh, you know, the surge for diagnostic services have gone up and AI is definitely serving as a boon, you know, for managing a wide data set and the requirements, uh, bringing in more efficiency as well as accuracy. I move on to Dr. Gaurav, you know, uh, you also are in a radiology division. So how do you see and which are the areas in radiology, especially where AI is making an intervention? Would you like to share your experience? Uh, good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here amongst uh, all of you. So I'm a diagnostic radiologist and, uh, uh, you know, radiology is one branch which is uh, so closely linked with technology uh, that is imperative that AI will make uh, roads and have a huge impact uh, in, in this uh, field of diagnostic radiology. Now, there are, you know, we, multiple uh, uh, areas where AI uh, impacts uh, radiology or has a very meaningful uh, uh, presence. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it has a role in image annotation where you can actually label, have an automated labeling of the parts, uh, which is readily available for the radiologist to uh, uh, interpret. Sure. Uh, it can help in, uh, you know, detection, characterization, and follow-up of lesions and pathology. And I'll give you examples uh, of, uh, you know, various uh, spe specialities. So from head to toe, if we start, you know, beginning with uh, neuroradiology, AI has a role uh, in, uh, you know, s detection of strokes, bleeds, uh, uh, you know, uh, remote areas uh, where you do a CT angiogram, detection of large vessel occlusions, you know, you do not have the uh, luxury of a radiologist being available at all places. And uh, this is where, uh, you know, AI interpretations can provide a preliminary uh, report for faster and accurate diagnosis. Sure. 
coming to chest uh, uh, chest x rays is a you know is a is a uh, tool which is one of the wide most widely used tools in radiology for detection of pneumonias nodules pneumothorax pleural effusions uh, you have softwares which can you know uh, uh, pinpoint all these pathologies and it was used you know it it, it was a, a big use in during covid times we did use these softwares where you know uh, the number of studies had exceeded vastly and you know you wanted a quick rep uh, interpretation so we we did make use of these uh, softwares to have a, a, a quick report chest cts for detection of nodules you know some of these tasks are uh, uh, time taking for the radiologists but they are very very you know mundane they can be automated uh, nodules can be measured by an artificial uh, by by the software sure. it, uh, on a follow up they can be uh, seen whether they are increasing decreasing in cases of cancers so that's a uh, 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 area where it has a role so i have a one i have one question for you because you're talking about the efficiency part of it you know definitely it's taking care of the efficiency part of it but what about the accuracy you know how accurate it is because ai claims to uh, you know standardize the results you know across different uh, you know tests being carried across different centers you know so how does it what is the level of accuracy today, you know, that so, we're seeing? Yeah. So, see, uh, you know, radiology as a branch has got a lot of variables. Uh, so, you know, in those areas where uh, things are stat, uh, there are, the variability is less and uh, AI will be, you can develop accurate uh, uh, models, for example, if you want to, uh, and that has, that has gained very rapid acceptance. So, you know, I'll give you an example. For example, there is a software AI software to calculate the bone age uh, from x-rays. Now, you know, there is a very uh, thing which can be automated easily because it uh, uh, you see the shape of the bone, you input that into the software and uh, then calculate the age. You well are When a radiologist does it manually, that, that'll take 15, 20 minutes. But when you have a software uh, with, you know, uh, 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 which matches the shape of the bone, you get a result in few minutes and it's faster, it's accurate. Uh, measurement of, you know, in obstetric imaging, uh, ultrasound equipments have come up with automated measurement of uh, fetal measurements like a head circumference. You just freeze the image, press a button and the, uh, you will ac automated, uh, get an automated measurement. So things which do not have a variability, the accuracy will be better. Much you also ensure have to ensure on those softwares what is the quality of the background data with which the software has been created. Sure. The quality of data is is good. Uh, uh, there has, uh, is a lot of research which has gone beyond uh, to make it. It it will be an accurate, but it, obviously it has to be validated sure. by the uh, sure. radiologist on floor. Thanks, so, thanks, Gaurav. So I'll just move to um, you know, Doctor, um, sorry, Doctor Vikas. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, you're also from radiology. So if you would like to add, you know, in what is what has been your experience, you know, how you have been using AI in your sphere of influence and how it is making changes in bringing more efficient and accurate diagnosis. Thank you, Anisha. And apologies at the outset for getting late. Uh, I unfortunately don't have AI at my hospital to speed up my work. So I did get delayed because of that. And uh, as a matter of fact, there are three radiologists in this panel. So definitely there's going to be a significant overlap in our answers and queries which we address. So first of all, just let me take you back to a bit of history. Uh, first role of AI in radiology came way back in 1992 when it came with computer aided detection in cases of breast cancer with mammography. So where it, AI helped there was picking up micro calcifications which would have been normally missed by a human eye, even with lenses and magnification. So that was the first role of AI in diagnostic radiology. Subsequently, almost for 20 years, that was the only thing which left. Till the time in 2010, then a lot of activities and a lot of advancements took place in AI in radiology. So we started having the detection of pulmonary nodules and all. So let me just... Uh, all, most of it has been covered. I'll just sum up what Dr. Gaurav has announced. I don't think so I can add much more to it because he's almost sure. covered everything. So I would just say that the three basic uh, areas in radiology where AI has a role is A, 
workflow, improving our workflow. Like in any hospital, it has it improves our workflow by scheduling patients, by standardizing studies, and by picking up the protocols by itself, which a technician doesn't have to waste. So because of which you also add a degree of standardization because every technician will have its own way of uh, identifying uh, areas from where he, how he has to scan. But AI takes away all that. It takes away all variability in acquisition. Next it has is image reconstruction. So it definitely AI enhances the quality of the image which we are getting. The processing times are almost 30 to 50% times faster. So, and you have so much of data with CT scans and MRIs that you can get those images within seconds. The scan is over and your, the images are there. And thirdly, as uh, Dr. Garo pointed out, is image analysis. So I'll just add on a few areas where this image analysis has a role to play. For example, evaluation uh, tissue segmentation. We can volumetrically measure the amount of tissue, for example, liver tissue, when we need for liver transplant, when we need to assess patients for liver transplant. So AI can do it. AI-driven algorithms are there which will do it for you and there's less inaccuracy. Then in addition, you can have for stroke patients. There was a study in US and Canada where they found that residents at night who had to detect stroke, they were failing, uh, there were significant failures in able, ability to detect the subtle changes, which this AI-driven software helps. And it also at the same time uh, derives a score, which tells is the intervention going to be effective or not. So that's a huge development. And a lot of centers are using this rapid and many more so softwares for a stroke evaluation. Then you also have evaluation for brain in neurodegenerative disorders, the brain volume, which part of the brain is going is getting degenerated and by how much the volume loss is there so that you can reach a more accurate diagnosis there as well. Another place where AI has is in role in intervention radiology also. So how does it help there? It, the image fusion, MRI images can be fused with CT scans, they can be fused with the ultrasounds, and then it can give you exactly pinpoint the most accurate place where your needle needs to be guided and it can give you an area of guidance. In oncology, when you want to ablate a tumor, so AI will tell you whether what your area where your needle is placed, that with what wattage you're going to use, with how much time you're going to use that, what is the predictive area you're going to ablate. So this is a very accurate tool. You can get adequate degree of ablation so that surgery you may not need to do a surgery. So now to sum it up, I would just say that how does it help the patients? So it says SAFE is my acronym I use for SAFE. SAFE is for standardized images and processing. A is for accuracy, which is significantly enhanced. F is for speed and E is for efficiency. So, you know, when AI was coming, it was something like computers. When computers was coming, there's a lot of, lot of apprehension that our jobs will be taken away. The data entry, who's going, the clerks will lose their jobs and all. So similarly, when AI was coming to radiology, radiologists were apprehensive that their jobs are going to be taken away. They're going, the AI is going to do all the diagnosis, but it's not so. The AI, the jobs of radiologists will not be taken away, but the radiologists who use AI better will take away the job of normal radiologists who cannot use AI. That's very brilliantly put. Now we'll uh, move on to, uh, you know, understanding what are the challenges that we are seeing, you know, uh, when we're using AI in the diagnostic services, because uh, everything is, uh, AI is using a wide data set, analyzing a wide data set. And there are challenge is uh, on the quality of the data that, you know, you have today. Uh, there are challenges uh, in with respect to um, you know uh, the ethical framework in which ai is being uh, implemented the two, the ai tools have been into implemented so these are some of the challenges that we are facing today so i will ask dr uh, sanjay if you would like to address uh, you know some of the challenges on the data or the privacy side of it yeah thank you so good evening everyone it's a pleasure to be here this evening uh, talking about AI, I'm also a clinical radiologist. I head the radiology services as far as Gurgaon. Why are we all diagnosticians sitting here and talking about AI? The reason behind that is the diagnostics generate humongous amount of data. Data, even the images in radiology are all digital data. So the availability of data is so amenable to machine learning to devise algorithms for diagnostics. That is why the biggest leap and progress of AI in healthcare is in the field of diagnostics. 
that is one gorav and vikas have very eloquently cited many examples of use but what we are doing today is that ai has provided us many tools to use intelligently and the reason why ai is impactful is because the humongous of amount of data which is produced like a ct scan of chest and abdomen would typically produce some 1200 images so if a software which acts as a virtual assistant is available to pick up some of the lesions which because of the volume of data could be missed it is always going to be helpful it will increase the accuracy it will increase the efficiency of a radiologist and one use i'll just mention briefly before i come to challenges is that it's a huge role in public health you know large screening programs if suppose you take into account the national tb eradication program chest x rays have to be done for lakhs and lakhs of people so there are no radiologists available to read such volume of x rays so if a screening ai tool is available to detect tuberculosis that makes it doubly effective talking about challenges <clears throat> challenges basically arise because the whole generation of algorithms in diagnostics particularly radiology is through what we call machine learning you train a machine by feeding images similar images and then the machine learns this is a lesion this is not a lesion this is this kind of lesion this is not this kind of lesion so there is is lot of data bias when an algorithm is devised if the data is picked up from say one center or one region or one set of population it is possible that in that ethnic group there could be a prevalent uh, image or image pattern of a disease and when you apply the same algorithm to a different population the results may not be accurate or consistent so data bias is real data bias is something which needs to be taken care of before uh, devising an algorithm second is data privacy i mean i believe you had a session on cyber security in the morning patients data is private patients data cannot be compromised even when you give your data for algorithm development the patient's name should be anonymized all those things are taken care of and there are enough hackers in the system to get into the system and leak the data so this is a big problem the ethical issues ethical issues are very important i mean uh, dr gore mentioned about the trust the trust has to be developed but before that whenever a patient walks into the hospital and we do examination on the patient we do take an informed consent so if we are subjecting the patient's data to for, to artificial intelligence for diagnosing and diagnosing means ultimately whatever diagnosis comes out the treatment will be based on that so it is direct impact on the patient's health outcome are we taking an informed consent nobody is taking a consent that i will use ai to diagnose your disease and subsequently that will be used to treat you so this is a huge issue i mean uh, it is needs to be tackled and once things like this and doctors get used to the algorithms which the data is throwing up there is a trust between the patient doctor and outcome of ai then things will be better off sure legal issues are also there i mean who is who takes the ownership of a diagnosis thrown up by an ai are we holding the doctor accountable are we holding the company which has generated ai yeah driven diagnosis that is important so whole lot of issues to sum up i mean ai is here for real i mean we are not going to do without it yeah. it will thrive but there but it is it is a work in progress because of challenges sure and i would like to extend this question to uh, jatin you know you are from the manufacturing side of it what are some of the challenges specific challenges that you see in the ai adoption you know uh, 
I would like to hear, you know, our audience would like to hear your perspective. Okay, okay. Thank you, Risha. And before I begin, I would like to thank Kilitz and Dr. Ravi for uh, giving me this opportunity to share my views on this very exciting uh, topic. I think, you know, most of the points have been very meticulously, adequately uh, covered by my panel members. But having said that, I will touch upon those points which have not yet been uh, covered by my colleagues here. I think, you know, let's look at the country, our country, India. So if you look at the diversity, we have a growing population. We are a population of 1 billion plus people, you know. Now that is a huge challenge when we look at the healthcare sector and the healthcare services, especially in terms of uh, delivery. Now, if you look at a metro city and if you look at a low resource uh, place, a village, a taluk, uh, for example, a bulan shahar or any small town where the resources are not available, so what will work in a metro city may not work over there. Like my colleague had also pointed out, you know, that because of, uh, you know, non-availability of uh, radiologist, so one of the tools I say that AI is going to be a tool which is going to help everyone, all the stakeholders in the decision-making process. Now, AI, if we look at AI in a depth, it is more of an algorithm or a model. And if you go a little deeper, it is what we now call as the deep learning. Now, AI is involved into a deep learning because it will structure, the model is now structured in a way that it mimics the human brain. So it is now capable of processing, uh, you know, a lot of calculations, images at one tenth of the second, which a human mind can do, but looking at the mundane activity, uh, it cannot process that amount of load in the shortest possible time. So there is a prediction of an error. So having said that, Coming back, so the delivery, what I'm trying to say is that one solution will not fit all. One size will not fit all. So there has to be, given the diversity of our country, uh, there has to be, you know, different AI solution applicable for people at different taluks, districts, villages, and even in metro cities. Because CT scan, MRI machines are not available everywhere. Now, the second thing is regarding uh, the regulatory part which everybody has touched. Now, I think one thing which uh, we need to be reminded of is that the healthcare sector in India, especially India, is very heavily regulated. And especially in terms of data, uh, everything that we are, you know, recording, uh, in whether it's a document or in a software, you know, there are a lot of concerns whether it will be misutilized. So that has happened because of the past experiences. So all these concerns have to be built in into the AI to itself so that the scope and the purpose or the goal or the objective of AI is to have better output or outcomes so that ultimately patient safety, consumer safety is the number one priority for everyone. So Having said that, then the other uh, aspect is, you know, if I look at manufacturing also. So I am a manufacturer of diagnostic products. Now, one of the basic uh, requirement of AI deployment is, uh, you know, the volume. Now, I can, so I have, uh, because of my huge, you know, uh, volumes which are in, uh, required, my production lines are fully automated. And, you know, to share a specific example, you know, uh, the, we have got cameras installed, you know, uh, IR cameras installed in which programming is done and they are able to sense uh, any, or able to detect any error uh, in manufacturing and they are able to take away those uh, error devices. Now, with a human uh, intervention, this probably may not be possible to the level of accuracy that we are expecting 
from a, a IVD manufacturer or medical device manufacturer. So these are some of the things. The other aspect is that the hype or the story behind uh, the AI, what Dr. Ravi Gaur has also said that the trust is missing because, you know, as what uh, you have also, uh, my we colleague has also mentioned, when from typewriter we migrated to computers, there was this narrative which was told to us that, you know, jobs will be taken away. But I like to remind that jobs are still intact. And in fact, if we move up the value chain, uh, we have in fact grown. So AI will do the mundane uh, processes. They will evaluate, they will analyze and give a conclusion, which will be the input for the concerned doctor. And because doctor has that rich experience and will give it to the patient. So this is what is called as human touch. Sure. In spite of all the progress, that human touch is going to be missing as aspect of AI. So which is something that we will, uh, the human people or doctors will be bringing onto the table. Sure. Another thing is we have to create a lot of all these stakeholders, whether it is IT companies, technology companies, doctors, everybody. They have to create a lot of awareness and training sessions so that the benefits of AI uh, have to have, you know, is realized. Like even in, you know, uh, professional platforms like LinkedIn and other, like even the Microsoft Word, now AI is now inbuilt into those systems now. So whatever the mundane aspect is, it's, it's, it's removed now. And if any error is there, in, in grammatical or anything, it prompts you. So I think, you know, that fear or the narrative that, you know, it's going to uh, create any negative impact that has to be actually removed. It's just a uh, lack of awareness. So that is why I'm saying that mm -hmm. training has to be there so that, you know, we are able to deploy AI uh, in a way which adds maximum output or outcomes in for the benefit of the humanity. Thank you. Thanks. I now move on to uh, Dr. Naveen. Uh, what has been your experience, you know, uh, in with AI and any specific challenges that you have been experiencing, you know, with AI? Basically, as per my opinion, AI is something like uh, not only as we are talking about diagnostics and uh, healthcare, but in each and every industry, each and every aspect, AI is becoming the most useful tool. True. If you see, like uh, in our day-to-day -day life, is right from morning uh, to, uh, I think, uh, bedtime, we are using AI tools in our many applications, in our phone, everything. So uh, day by day, uh, it is becoming uh, a sort of essential tool in every uh, every field. So previously, like people has apprehension, and obviously for any new technology, everybody finds a threat to means um, human jobs and human role. But if you means uh, if we see uh, historically, then each and every tool, whatever has come as an new technology. Uh, previously, means people used to think that uh, though it will be a threat, but uh, later on, it has become an essential, most essential tool uh, in that industry or in that uh, uh, any particular use. So similarly, in healthcare, if we see right from uh, the era of telemedicine to uh, when, uh, first of all, it started with teleradiology, so when we, people were thinking of teleradiology at that time also, there were many uh, aspects, uh, ethical aspect of data privacy and everything, and uh, even few legal issues. But uh, later on, um, uh, it became, uh, uh, I think, uh, all people started relying on that uh, teleradiology tool. Sure. Equally, if we see, like uh, when I was in Harvard uh, 10 years back, and uh, that time, uh, when we were talking about telemedicine, there were lots of uh, there was lots of resistance in US uh, considering 
लीगल इश्यूज अबाउट डेटा प्राइवेसी पेशेंट प्राइवेसी बट वेन द टाइम ऑफ कोविड क्या है आई थिंक इवन फ्यू इयर्स बिफोर कोविड Uh, the telemedicine become one of the most uh, essential tool and uh, there was no replacement for that that time even True. in india we saw a big change True. so uh, if we see like uh, uh, the appropriate and adequate use of uh, ai uh, can uh, be uh, uh, we can say Uh, it will be a not replacing humans or new, uh, replacing doctors but it will be very much boosting exactly. in uh, r- respect of uh, this uh, speed or volume means uh, uh, as uh, many of the speakers said about uh, the uh, means usability in respect to like uh, uh, screening screening in the uh, like mass population and all so sure. not only screening but in a day to day diagnosis everything like you can uh, even uh, i recently uh, went through a paper published by one dr thomas from brazil so that that was like uh, the methodology uh, in uh, a comprehensive patient care the hospital uh, needs one methodology uh, uh, suppose the misdiagnosed or uh, uh, miss missing diagnosis can be uh, like uh, means counter check with the another methodology of uh, ai obviously from the data different data from sure. the, uh, of the patients so uh, if we uh, see that way then that uh, that is becoming Beneficial. the uh, most advantageous uh, tool and uh, i think it will not disrupt but it will definitely enhance uh, and uh, make the life easy of doctors and patients uh, recently like uh, uh, many radiologists are there so uh, they must have gone through the new uh, machines ct scanners so uh, patients we can uh, do ct scan remotely the yeah. ai tools so uh, even though there is no technician the, we can adopt um, ms everything like uh, the uh, whatever sequence we want we can select uh, through uh, in a remote place and uh, we can get the ct scan done in case of emergency so there are ma- many things which can absolutely yeah, so it is also can, improving the accessibility of uh, yeah accessibility diagnostic services 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 adequate and, and uh, we can say appropriate use yeah. is definitely going to enhance the acceptability great brilliant so definitely uh, ai is not going to replace the human intelligence it is uh, definitely a tool that is going to amplify amplify the exactly human it will amplify yeah and ingenuity with that let's see what's the future looks like you know we all heard there are some challenges uh, you know related to the data part of it privacy part of it the framework part of it but still the pro- the future looks promising one can't ignore ai in making the diagnostic services more efficient and accurate and uh, we'll go round uh, we'll take we'll go round uh, all the panelists and understand or rather take a you know peep into what the future looks like what is the diagnostic smart di- the diagnostic going to look like in the next decade so i start again by <laughs> asking dr ravi what do you think you know you said hype or hope <laughs> what do you think you know it's continue it's going to continue to be a big hype or you see a promising hope uh, in the way ai will transform the diagnostic services okay i think two important things are i'll say two plus two yeah both and uh, i think uh, first and foremost we'll start with ai has arrived there's no doubt about it there's no survival without it and we all need to adopt this intelligence if the country needs a solution because the way if you look at we have about you know 200000 pathology labs we have only about 20000 pathologists out of that about 7000 is not practicing or doing something else how can you report this i think automation is an answer ai analytics is an answer point of care testing is an answer it all has to be technology and finally convert into ai and give you interpretation which is actually relevant to the patient that's the one part so that's without that something i'll like to say to like couple of now if you look at the diagnostics a patient comes to us and i think a patient has multiple symptoms doctor takes 20 minutes to understand and hear him but if you have multiple system you go to ai 
probably they can come out of the algorithm. Oh, this is what the diagnosis is. That's one help probably in a positive way. Same thing, all integrating all reports, radiology, pathology, cardiology, neurological, all reports and old reports history together. You, otherwise, you take 30 minutes to go over the pages. Probably AI will help you out. Okay, this is a summary. And this is what the direction advised you. Maybe you missed out something. Today, doctors are too stressed. Though. Pathologist is also seeing so much overload. I think I'm sort of sitting here, 4,000 in the lab, they're testing, reporting. It's possible to overload. Mm -hmm. I think these are the two positive. Now, I think let's show other side. I'm always, okay, always show by both part of the thing. Like first and foremost, the AI, what I mentioned was the data. Now, how it is like, you know, a AI doctor versus a say a normal doctor. An AI doctor want to say that, okay, you come to me, I'm calculating, your diagnosis is now complete, and uh, you know, I am advised you this treatment, that's all I can do for you. Now, if you got the same thing, the patient will ask me another question. My liver function is, Okay, your liver function is 85% damage. So I have to worry. Yes, you have to worry accordingly. That's it. Now, worry accordingly, kya, this is not simplified. I think that's another question the AI doctor is going to be. This is something which is going to be. Now, when you come to a real doctor, you're going to say, Look, I understand. You take this medicine. If it doesn't work, take another medicine. And don't worry, we are there. We'll come back to you and you come back to me. That compassion, communication, understanding, which is something which is definitely. You know, like a need, probably, which is going to help everybody out. And lastly, the most important, I think we have, I think talking about safe, you know, come what may, you know, we have predictive genomics today. AI is helping in prediction. There is a, there are offerings which have been done in diagnostic called genome patri. We have genome patri, but the genome but based on your genomics, based on your habits, based on your everything, we can predict. But it has to be taken by, like, not like 100%. It has to be counseled well. It has to be taken together well. Because 80% risk of prostate cancer, I'm going to die thinking of it without getting cancer. I think this is where we need to be putting the things together. And AI hype is now lastly and most importantly, I'll say this is something which is AI, whether it's I am not intelligence or it's artificial intelligence or it's augmented intelligence or ultimately it's an awesome intelligence. We have to work on it. That's the way. Sure. Thanks. I now move on to you. Uh, if you would like to, you know, give us a peep into what the next decade would look like with the AI, you know, how the labs will transform in very one or two specific areas. Uh, you know, to sum my up. colleague has just already mentioned that predictive analysis. That's the area where AI is going to make the maximum change, in, uh, not only in radiology. So it's going to interpret those images and customize a plan according to the patient's uh, areas. What are his uh, what are his or her specific issues which need to be addressed? So AI will create an algorithm that if you have A, okay, you cannot take B, so we'll go on a different treatment path. So these algorithms, the prediction that what are the lifespan, what are the treatment outcomes which are likely to be, this is where it's going to be the next area where this is going to focus, predictive uh, medicine. Uh, the next thing also where it's going to is all the high-end companies, all the CT scanners and uh, MRI machines are incorporating AI. So they are standardizing that protocol so that this standardization allows for comparison across both. So with this, uh, with this comparison and standardization, I think we are going to be more accurate and more efficient in our uh, areas of uh, prediction. Brilliant. What about you? Yeah, so uh, in this world of, uh, you know, uh, evidence-based medicine, uh, I think as everybody has said, the early diagnosis and early treatment would be the key cornerstone of the, of the, of the, of healthcare. And uh, uh, coming to, uh, again, predictive medicine or predictive uh, pathology, predictive uh, is, would be one of the key things than risk stratification of disorders, uh, which, for example, I have... Uh, consulted with a lot of my clinicians in uh, all specialities, everybody had said that uh, you give us a solution where somebody comes to emergency, somebody comes to OPD, his, uh, his uh, blood levels are like this. Well, how to? So now what they're doing is they're taking care of separately. Images are adding separate value and the lab are se working separately. Probably the day would come that where all the data from all the, all the specialities would go into one central database. 
and there would be the role of interoperability would come in uh, where uh, so all the all the all the platforms they work on a similar similar uh, you know data uh, the validation would be much easier and based on that data mix uh, the clinicians would get a trigger and alert that this patient is having infarct is having uh, trauma is having uh, is having uh, uh, cirrhosis or he is having ckd ckds all of these uh, lung cancers for example i know i remember that when i was working in in, in cancer institute uh, from a lab side we were working like on my few uh, bi biochemical parameters my histopathology is working on few uh, of bi biopsies and the, and the and the radiology was working on the ccts and but they were all reading in separate 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 groups but the moment you put them in a in a in a single mix you get a get a you know the wonderful results and that would make the life of oncologists and other specialties much much easier i think the future is moving in that direction great got it yeah so i think uh, uh, ai is going to be a great enabler in healthcare including all uh, all diagnostic specialties uh, you know all the mundane routine tasks will be automated uh, in the future uh, uh, leaving you know diagnostic physicians to deal with the complex issues and give them time to deal and sort out the complex issues sure. we'll just need to navigate the challenges uh, the medical legal issues the ethical issues uh bring together all the stakeholders to actually uh take the way forward great dr sanjay how about you yeah so a lot has been said and uh, to sum it up i'll just say as a radiologist i look forward to better more validated algorithms that is first because accuracy has always to be improved that is one second is that wider availability of more tools which are integrated so as a radiologist i would look forward that my ct scanner comes with inbuilt ai algorithms i don't have to buy one algorithm from one company and another one from another company so they should all be integrated so that the image analysis is fast and i get the answers what i need sure and thirdly i would believe and hope that the world also the clinicians the patients diagnosticians everybody understands the whole system and there is more trust so that great. there is better adoption great dr navin see as per me like uh, medicine is the uh, most uh, you can say uh, means unpredictable in uh, in respect to suppose say diagnosis and line of treatment by every individual physician so it can change from person to person as we say uh, medicine is not a mathematics so 2 plus 2 by everyone cannot be four in medicine so everybody will have his different view uh, similarly in the uh, diagnosis and treatment obviously i yeah, mean there are lots of ai tools so everybody will have like if the machine ct scanner is uh, inbuilt with some type of algorithm and some type of uh, uh, ai so uh, uh, similarly the another uh, machine in pathology lab will have some different type of algorithm so in uh, like uh, as we uh, few of us spoke about uh, the integration of the ai tools and uh, integration of data so in future like uh, uh, with a proper emr and proper uh, uh, integrated ai tools it it will uh, help uh, i think on a huge scale to uh, uh, reduce the abuse of medicine yeah. and abuse of treatment even because so uh, like patient uh, outcomes and better yeah patient outcome will uh, it can yeah drastically it can change there can be huge uh, disruption in that because see uh, if we take example of a patient uh, somewhere you must have many people would have come across if if there is a fever in uh, uh, with uh, someone in india like uh, 104 105 oh there was so high temperature what we i should do and then doctor he calls uh, 100 times doctors or he visit doctor then 
doctor will also uh, as a preventive thing he will start with antibiotics everything but the same type of symptom if somebody of uh, our known person is getting in western countries suppose uk or us so they have uh, set given protocols and uh, uh, quite uh, good uh, uh, patient education that uh, uh, if there is no red flag of uh, symptom so and so symptoms until that even though the temperature sure. is 104 or 105 so you don't worry sure so that is a thing uh, similarly uh, means if uh, the uh, comprehensive and integrated ai tool is available then it will give that type of uh, help or that type of confidence or that type of boost to uh, all treating physicians also sure so it is definitely beneficial for both the patients as well as exactly. the physician exactly uh, means uh, i think somebody of us uh, spoke about covid period sure. so if it would have been used means uh, uh, good tools in covid that would also have redu uh, reduced the uh, outcome in many covid patients even abuse of many thing because everybody was using same protocol whether there is need of remdesivir or the need of tocilizumab Sure. Everybody was got, getting this one. Yeah, I move on to uh, Jatin. You know, I mean, just very quickly, if I you think, could just say. Yeah, uh, you know, I about. think AI is AI is going to be a big, big game changer and a game enabler also, especially in the healthcare field. You know, looking at how the data sets are evolving, in fact, you know, as I mentioned in my previous uh, discussion also. Now, in India, what is happening is. Uh, india has got lot of population but no data no data with respect to particular genome or with particular disease so all the data so we don't have data in fact all the rich richness of data when we doing a mongous amount of testing it has to be collated and you know whether it is prevention prediction or or then treatment you know everything has to be you know correlated through the ai because processing crunching will be done at a much efficient level when the ai tools will be deployed not manually so when we look at uh, in india we have specific diseases like chikungunya sorry uh, japanese encephalitis or you know they are uh, kala azar so right now we know it is there in bihar and jharkhand but what is the population why is uh, certain population susceptible to certain disease so that data i think we have we have yeah. a time So I think you know yeah. this is why you know we need tools like AI, sure. which will actually change the game of the health and giving more health to people. Great, empowering so, everybody in the value chain. Sorry, thank you. So I, yeah, so yeah, we'll have to also open uh, you know and take questions from the audience. But I, I think, yeah, I think speak. not more. I just want to make the audience aware because today we have AI-driven smart toilets. in the stanford university professor gambhir has done this study and about 20000 such toilets are there where you go in the morning in the west rest room but the for the body fluid whether you by the time you come out all your reports are flashed to your doctors if you're diabetic or blood something maybe the ambulance is knocking at your door wow that yeah, is yes, advantage yes. so it becoming like finer faster and a fruitful diagnosis that's what the ai is doing So great thank you so much uh, thank you each one of you uh, each of the panelists and definitely ai is going to change the diagnostic services in india and the and will play a pivotal role in the healthcare history of india